Hey what's up guys, welcome back to another video and today we're going to talk about Mint. So I've wanted to talk about Mint for quite some time now, but I never really felt like I had a clear and decisive opinion to give about it. On one hand it offers dozens of seemingly really useful features, but on the other I find myself drifting away from it after a pretty short amount of time. I think I finally figured out why that is and hopefully I can help you decide if you want to hook up all of your accounts to yet another website. Now keep in mind I can only show you so much of the actual interface without showing you all of my bank account information, but I will try to find some pictures and videos from online to overlay so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So let's start off with security because of course if you can't trust Mint with your account information then what is actually the point? I know people hate this argument but obviously nothing is 100% secure that goes for Mint and it goes for your bank account itself. I'm guessing if you're watching this video you've come to terms with letting one service or another access to all of your account information and as far as budgeting apps go Mint is about as secure as they come. Not only does it have all of the high end security features you've come to expect from other financing apps but it also comes from a trustworthy and well known company. Unlike many startups you'll find on the app store Intuit the company that owns Mint has been around for years not just with Mint but also with other subsidiaries like TurboTax and QuickBooks. Long story short, nothing is completely safe, but Mint is about as trustworthy as you'll find. Mint is also completely free to use and compatible with a wide array of bank accounts, checking accounts, and various other types of accounts. Your mileage may vary, but if you're having trouble finding the account you're looking for, just hang in there because they are adding new ones all of the time. Moving on to the interface, in general I don't have a problem with the look and feel of Mint, but there is definitely room for improvement. The main complaint I hear about the interface is just how many ads there are. Now unfortunately because Mint is free, Intuit is going to have to find other ways to monetize their website and like most companies they choose ads. However unlike most companies Mint insists on disguising their ads as special offers and it's not that most people don't understand what special offers mean but it still seems kind of weird that an app designed around getting you out of and keeping you out of debt is constantly offering you more and more credit cards. Other than that though the interface is pretty well designed considering how much information it has in it. So Mint offers several really cool features to help you keep up with your finances. Obviously the most prevalent is the budgeting function that you've probably heard of. Essentially Mint lets you set up budgets for everything in your life and then it will attempt to categorize all of your purchases into different categories so it can fill in your budget with those. In general it does a pretty good job organizing everything just based off the name given in the transaction but of course it's not 100%. You're still going to have to keep your eye on it because it's not always going to do what you'd like it to do. Like even if it gets close and it puts it in like restaurants, you might want it in fast food or eating out or some subcategory that you have set up and it's not always going to do that for you. Another thing Mint does is help you keep all of your bills in one place. There are some accounts like credit cards that will show up automatically in the bills section, but if you want everything in there you're probably going to have to add some of them manually. But when you're adding them in you can choose whether or not they're on auto pay, how often they're due, and for how much they're due. I find this super helpful and it's probably one of my favorite features of Mint. Not because I actually pay the bills through Mint, but because it gives me a place where I can have all of the subscription services I have in a nice little row so I can see what I'm actually paying for. It can even add due dates to your calendar if you choose to do that. Another thing that Mint does is give you a monthly credit score. It's not a standard credit score like you'd expect, but it's actually Mint's own proprietary credit score. But nevertheless, it's a good idea to keep track of your credit score and it's kind of nice that they just give it to you every month. Lastly, probably the most annoying thing about Mint is how slow to update it can be. It almost always takes the app a minute or two to update all your accounts after you first open it and even then some transactions just won't show up for hours or even days sometimes. Unfortunately what this means is if you were hoping to get real time balances out of Mint you're going to be a little disappointed. You're still going to need to log into your bank account if you want up to the minute updates. So all that being said, is Mint actually worth it? And I think the short answer is yes but there are a couple things you're going to have to keep in mind. First of all, Mint is still going to require quite a bit of time if you want to use it effectively. Yes, it has plenty of automated systems to help you save time, but you're still going to have to keep an eye on them to make sure they don't make any mistakes. And of course, in the end, you're still going to have to hold yourself accountable. It's easy to download a budgeting app in the hopes that it'll help you save money, and yes, it can facilitate that, but you're still going to have to hold yourself accountable. You're still going to have to open the app, check your budgets, and then stop spending money when you get close to your limits. Obviously it's not always that easy, sometimes you have to go over on your spending limits and then if you're like me you just forget to check it and never actually do what it wants you to do. That's the problem I've had with Mint for years. I'll set up all sorts of nice budgets and goals within Mint and then after a couple weeks I'll just completely stop checking it and at that point it's just running in the background and it's not really going to help you do anything. Mint can't make you save money and Mint can't even really make budgeting fun after that initial interest in the app wears off. But if you hold yourself accountable and you continue to open the app and pay attention to what information it's giving you, it can be a really nice utility and I definitely recommend you checking it out. 
Anyway, thank you all so much for watching. Today's question of the day is, do you use a budgeting app, and if so, which one? Let me know by tapping the I, and don't forget, I post new videos every single Sunday, so I'd definitely like to see you back next week. But until then... Thank you.